strong language and adult subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, she claims she was molested by her father. Absolutely not. I would never do anything to you. Do you think it happened? No. I'm telling you what our father did. He called me a liar. Who's telling the truth? That night, you're drunk, you're high on drugs. I felt violated waking up and seeing my father there. Didn't you say it was still dark in the room? There was light from the street lamp. You can't change your story every time I ask you a question. It was either dark or it was light. Let's do it. How are you doing today? Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I'm trying to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Well, it's a mother's worst nightmare. Your teen daughter, once daddy's little girl, tells you with tears in her eyes, Mom, Dad raped me. Shocking, yes, but it's a reality for Tina, who says that ugly accusation left her with a huge decision. Who does she believe? The man she's been married to for nearly 30 years or her youngest daughter? Now, before I tell you whose side she took, I want you to listen to what her daughter, Megan, describes as a night that changed her life forever and why she now says she gets physically sick at the sight of her own father. I believe that when I was 18, my father did rape me. Before I came home that night, and I was with my brother and his girlfriend at the time. We were getting completely wasted. And then when I came home, I went straight to my room, took all my clothes off, no underwear, no brown, and I jumped into bed and passed out. I had a dream that somebody was having sex with me and it felt very real. It was a black figure in my dream. I didn't see a face. It was on the street. When the man that was having sex with me finished, that's when I woke up and saw my father standing there. The covers were off of me when I woke up. I pulled my covers on me, started screaming, why are you in my room? Get out, get out. And he was telling me, I'm looking for my cell phone, I'm looking for my cell phone, as I see him gathering himself, basically. I was so intoxicated that I immediately fell back to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, I was in tons of pain from drinking, the drugs. I didn't remember anything that night. I was, you know, stumbling to the bathroom trying to find my way, and I was sitting there going, you know, going to the bathroom, and I felt pain. Things slowly started coming back to me, and when I heard my father coming into the house, I started closing the door, and as I'm closing the, the bathroom door, we caught eye contact, and I saw his face, and he had this crazy grin on his face, like, ha, I got you. I saw nothing but pure darkness in his eyes. That's when I realized that it happened. Everything came back, everything. I am 100% sure that my dad raped me that night. Well, as you can see, Megan says she is positive her father did this to her. But who did her mom believe? Megan says that after a year, this didn't happen right away, she finally had the courage to speak up. Her mother and older sister immediately called her a liar. I waited a year to tell my family what happened. The first person I told was my older sister. She called me a liar. Our father that raised us never laid his ill hand on us except to discipline us. I know that he is not a rapist and he's not interested in having sex with, you know, his daughter. But he's still a man. The men still well, have intentions, bad intentions. Not against right. their daughter. She told my parents and I got a lot of angry phone calls, text messages, how could you say this, you're on drugs, you're lying, they ganged up on me. You woke up and dad was on top of you, I mean, this, hey, that's Dennis, a horrible thing to say. Uh, I'm looking for facts and I don't see any. What facts is there going to be? 
they made me feel like the bad guy, like I did something wrong. When we confronted my dad about it, he made a joke, actually, about it. He said it was because I hung out with the wrong crowd, so somebody must have broke into our home and hurt me. He called me a whore and a slut. I feel very uncomfortable being around my dad. If I'm wearing something short or low cut, I try to pull my blouse up. I'm just, like, disgusted with him. I can't look at him in the eyes. Everyone thinks that my dad's this great godly man that would never hurt their children. They are wrong. Okay, Megan, I, I'm glad to meet you and sorry for the circumstance. Why is your own family not believing you? They trust my dad and they just, they feel like because I was on drugs and I was doing all these things that I just made up this crazy story to, to get back at them for something. Mm -hmm. Is that a reasonable consideration on their part that you were drunk and high? I could see how, you know, that would affect, you know, th and believe me. You know, by, you know, me being on drugs, me being drinking and stuff, I can see how they wouldn't believe that because mm -hmm. of that circumstance. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm your daughter, Mom. You know, I'm your sister, Chrissy. You know, like, why don't you believe me? As you go back through this mentally, emotionally, physically, yes. you are 100% sure he raped I'm you. I'm 100% sure. You, you say you can't look at him now. You're disgusted when you see him. Yeah, I'm, I'm disgusted. I get anxiety. I I can't. What do you want to happen here today? What, what's your goal in being here? Uh, my goal is just getting the truth out and just letting them know, like, no, I didn't make up this story. This is something that, that happened to me and that has caused a lot of pain in my life. Well, who's calling her a liar? Megan's mom, Tina, says she can barely look at her daughter and just wants Megan to finally tell the truth. Take a look. I got upset. I felt sick to my stomach. My heart just felt to the ground. And I looked at Megan and like, you're a liar. How could you lie to me? And say things like that against her family. There's no way in a million years that my dad would ever, ever touch my sister sexually. When Megan told me about these accusations, I was in immediate protection mode of my little sister. I called my mom. I hated her. At that moment, she wasn't my daughter. Saying something like that. I looked her straight in the face and I said, you're a liar. And I hate you. Why, after so many years, Dad has never done anything like, he's never done anything sexual to us, ever, 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 why would he try to do something so horrible to you? She didn't just accuse my husband. It felt like we were all being accused. She just took a knife and just stabbed me, stabbed my heart, stabbed my soul. I believe something happened to her. She likes to party, hang out with wrong crowd so she could have been raped by somebody but was not my husband you say that this is like a knife to your heart what's your reaction to this and what she's saying it is a knife to my heart and what she's saying I just can't believe it she's gone this far with it and ran with it why don't you believe her because of all the things that she's done Everything that she's been through, everything that... Well, what has she done and been through that affects what happened that night? What are, you, what are you saying that causes you to not look at her as credible? For one, she's given herself to so many men. You mean being promiscuous or you mean prostitution? That and being promiscuous. Both? Both. Just because they do that doesn't mean they can't be victimized right. by a sexual predator. We're clear on that, right? Clear. I'm clear. Do you think she believes it? I think she believes in her mind that it did happen, in, in her mind, mm -hmm. not in our mind, but in her mind. Do you think she believes this? I think Megan believes it, yes. Do you think it happened? No, absolutely not. You, you, she is 100% certain that it happened. You two are 100% certain that it did not. Yeah, How yeah. can you be so sure you weren't there? Right. Um, well, just based on her story alone, um, just the fact that she said it was a dream um, and that she woke up, and saw my dad in her room, that doesn't say that dad raped her. And my dad has never laid an ill hand on us, except to discipline us. And um, this is just extremely 
Why would she make fetched. up this lie? This is, if, if this is a lie, it is incredibly vicious. Why would she do that? Um, you know what? I, I honestly don't think that she's intentionally lying. I think that she's confused, and I think that um, she's misled by that dream and waking up to seeing my father in her room. But I, I know my dad. My dad would never, ever, ever, ever Are you touch lying? her no, in a I'm sexual not way. You're 12 or 13 and you say you get things from men. How did you do that? I needed food in my belly. I needed clothes on my back. They would offer me clothes and shoes for sexual acts. And later, I'm going to ask you straight up. Did you rape your daughter? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. He's 26 and still lives at home. My son is unmotivated, sloppy, lazy. And his room is a complete pig site. Did they cut him some slack? He got a job trimming marijuana plants and then had to see a psychiatrist for hallucinations. Or kick him to the curb. How'd you get him to do this? To make such a mess? I didn't. He did not come out of the womb and start throwing stuff around the delivery room. That's tomorrow. How do you get along with your father before this accusation? Before this, I mean, things were things were okay. Um, ever since I like turned 13 and stuff, and he wasn't really there for me, and he always, you know, every time I went to my parents in general and asked them, hey, I need clothes, or hey, I need this for school, or hey, I want to try out for the basketball team, I need a jersey, or I need this for this, and you know, they wouldn't give it to me, and my dad would always tell me, hey, go get a job, and I'm like, um, I'm 13 years old, how am I going to go get a job to support myself? Like, that's a little ridiculous, you know, and so obviously I found other means to get the things that I needed. Dad, when you were 12 or 13? Uh, yes, when I was 12 and 13. And what were your other means? My other means were, were other men that would give me the things that I needed. Mom no. and Dad were not rich. Mom and Dad I were know, not rich. Uh, Mom and Dad, Whenever we, we, we were needed rich, something. but we had, we, had home, we had always had a nice roof over our we heads. Always had we everything. always had everything. But had every, everything. Time, every time I needed clothes or I needed something for, for if I wanted to go out try for basketball, like I said, I couldn't do that because I couldn't get the jerseys that I needed. That's not true. You did. I couldn't do any of you that. You had the jersey. Stuff. You're 12 or 13 and you say you get things from men. How did you do that? What would you do? Uh, well, they would offer me clothes and shoes for sexual acts. And you're 12? And I was 12 years old. And so where yeah. would you meet these men? Yeah, I'd go to the mall and... How, how does this come up? You're at the mall, there's some guys yeah, at the so mall. Some guys, they, they come up to me like, oh, you're really pretty, um, you're very mature for your age, um, you know, and, and I, they would just, they would offer me things and, and I needed them at the time, you know, I wanted them, I needed food in my belly, I needed clothes on my back, I wanted shoes, I, they made me feel pretty and... So you're now saying that you didn't have food to eat when you were 12 or 13? There was times where, where I'd come home and I'd be like, Mom, what's for dinner? And she would be drunk and upstairs in her room. Mom made dinners all the, the time. time. No, I love didn't. Mom's dinners. Mom made the best dinners all the time. Sometimes... You weren't there, yes, Chrissy. Are you, you were you, you were running around with your friends. You were you're four years older than me, Chrissy. Didn't you were barely matter. in the household. I still remember coming home. So you Mom went to dinner. the mall no. instead and... You perform sex, sexual acts with men that would give you money for food or food. Or they would buy give me clothes. money. They would buy me. You know, they'd take me out to dinner, feed me. They would give How me. How much clothes. money would they give you? They gave me like twenty bucks, and then they give me clothes. And did you know about this? No. Are you just hearing about it now for yeah. the first time? That's because they were never around. I was always around. You were always I was drunk. Old, I was working. I worked seven days. I worked hard. I did what I had no. to do for the family. Don't say no. I will say no because I know I know what I happened know. in my childhood. I, know. I, was you, there. I, I was there by, during your childhood, by the way. Barely. I was there. You ran we away, Chrissy. You parents. always ran away because with I your boyfriends, and you were always out partying with your friends. I did. You were I never did. there I, for I, me. I Every time that. I needed you, you were never there for me, ever. I am so sorry that I was not there for you, Megan. I am so sorry. I was off doing my own stupid exactly. stuff. Exactly. So you don't my know. Own you weren't there. I'm sorry, Megan. I wish that I could have been there for you, but I, I wasn't, and I'm so sorry. I know sorry. that. And I forgive.
forgive you for that. And now, even when this is happening, I'm still looking at you in your eyes and telling you what our father did, and you still say it, and you call me a liar. You away from those people doing that to you. Were you drunk upstairs? No. My mom has a drinking I, I, problem. I work. Are you an alcoholic? Yes. I don't think I so. She is. Do you I, drink to excess? I, I drink, but just just when I come home from work, I drink she a couple beers. She starts drinking at 10 o'clock in the morning. I don't. And and how can I when I have to work? She, you how get home from work at 10 o'clock. She goes to work at 5 o'clock in the morning, comes home by 10 o'clock, and has a freaking 40 ounce and a bottle of vodka and gets wasted. No, I don't. And by the time I get home from school, which is usually around noon or something, she's wasted. And I can't even have a decent conversation with her. Not so true. you feel <laughs> not true. Okay. So you feel so I'm like lying. I'm always lying. I'm, I'm the liar. Thank you. So you feel like your family wasn't there for you? No. Well, you know, I, have, I have always said, and I will say again, I, I think sex crimes and certainly children being molested is a false positive situation in that you you need to believe the accuser until you prove otherwise. You know, in a general criminal system, you're innocent until proven guilty. If a child comes forward and says they've been molested, they've been touched, they've been raped, you have to believe that until you investigate and determine whether it's true or not. Mm -hmm. Because the worst thing in the world you can do is have someone that has the courage to come forward and say that and then be rejected, judged, criticized, not believed. And now, I mean, they're, they're completely lost. And there's the worst thing in the world you could do. That doesn't mean that you don't investigate the crime because it is not fair to just drop the hammer on somebody that is innocent and has just been accused for other reasons. The, the man we're talking about, Robert, the father, is here and says Megan is absolutely lying and has fabricated her hateful and disgusting accusation with one goal in mind, and that goal is payback because she did not like the way she was treated by this family. We're going to find out what he has to say after the break. Megan has always been a problem child. It's obvious to me why Megan made this allegation against me, because she just simply wanted me out of the house. And later, I have here polygraph results. When asked, did your father ever have sexual contact with you, you said? Yes. The results are... There's always this little tiny voice inside of your head that tells you, well, anything's possible. But in this case, it's your father. I know my dad well enough. He just would never do something like that. When a man walks in on a naked woman, the feeling that they get, then when a man walks in yeah, on his daughter naked, so naked, and that's completely so, different. Yeah, I understand that, but when dad's constantly telling me how much I look like my mom, that doesn't I mean, mean that he raped you. Can't well, Tina says her family was ripped apart when her youngest daughter, Megan, accused her father of coming into her room in the middle of the night and raping her as she laid passed out and naked from a night of drinking, drugs, and partying. Robert says, of course the family has taken his side because Megan is making the entire thing up. And until she admits her lie, <coughs> no one wants to be around her. I was so devastated by Megan's allegations. I would never rape my daughter or anyone else for that matter. I was never in her room at night, ever. I always go in in the morning to get my cell phone because I need it for work. She usually passes out with the phone next to her somewhere. Couldn't find it right away, so I had to wake her up. And she was in a really bad mood. She yelled at me, get out of my room and here's your phone and leave me alone. I don't know how a simple thing like going in to get my phone can turn into a rape allegation. My wife's room is next to Megan's room. She was home. My son was home. We had dogs in the house. They would have barked. Someone would have heard something. When I found out a year later that Megan accused me of raping her, my heart stopped. If it's the truth, why not go to yeah, like what an authority? You know, wouldn't you like to get the police over there? They do the rape kit. They find out the evidence. They do the steps. But those things never happen. And it was just she didn't get her way one day, I suppose, and um, just decided to pin some dream that she had on me. Megan has always been a problem child. Megan had drug problems. She's been into prostitution. We've even had a call from the FBI to come pick her up from their headquarters. It's obvious to me why Megan made this allegation against me, because she just simply wanted me out of the house. I've always been the person that tried to keep her in line, and she just wanted me out of the picture. I know that her tears, they seem really real. I know that maybe something happened to her, but I know that it wasn't you. 
Since those allegations, my relationship with Megan has been non-existent. Until we get to the bottom of this, I really can't have a relationship with my daughter. Well, normally, I would never ask a rape victim to be in the same place with their alleged attacker. But in this case, they have spent a lot of time together since the allegation emerged, and they have both agreed that they're comfortable with being here as long as I'm here. All right, Robert, please come on out and join us. Good to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Sir. You've been listening to everything so far. Yes. I'm going to ask you straight up. Did you rape your daughter? No. So you didn't do, you didn't touch her, you didn't rape her. Any of the things that she's saying took place. Absolutely not. So what is your explanation of of this? Why is she targeting you with this allegation? I believe it stems from me not giving her enough attention when she was growing up. Why this particular allegation instead of you beat her or you wh whatever. Why this? I think she just had so much pain in her, and she felt that it was all my fault that she was feeling this pain, and she just wanted to put her pain onto me. And now I feel pain, you know, so. You understand, if you did this, you are one sick son of a bitch, right? That would be true. That would be true. Yes, And what do you think should happen to somebody if they, in fact, did this? Um, I think they should be arrested and put in jail. And if you did this, then you should be arrested. Yeah, I would jail. turn myself in because I'd be—I think something was wrong with me. Why not put him in jail? Why have you not filed charges and put him in jail? Because we don't have—I don't have the proof. Like that night when it happened, I wanted to go to the hospital so bad. I even asked my mom. My mom wouldn't take me, and I didn't want to. The night that it happened. The, the morning that it happened, my body was shaking. My head hurt so bad. I okay, where had walk. you been the night before? The night before, I was with my brother and his girlfriend at the time, and we went down to Mexico, and we were at the bar, and we were drinking. And then after I hit my head, it increased. And how did you hit your head? Um, I went to go get changed from the bartender, and I went to go prop my body up on the bar, and I didn't see that there was a railing up there, and I smacked my head so straight you jumped on. Up I, into I, it. I, yeah, I jumped into it, basically. So it was almost like full force. Did it knock you out? No, it didn't knock me out, but it, it definitely, you know, put me back to the ground, and I was just like, whoa, like, that hurt really bad, and then, you know, I increased my alcohol drinking, I increased the cocaine to get rid of that pain. I even was sitting there with some ice on my forehead that the bartender had given me that night. You're, you're out partying, you, you hit your head enough that it knocks you to the ground. It's so <laughs> painful that... Your reasoning is, well, I just need to drink more. Well, to get rid of the pain, yeah. And do more cocaine. Yeah, to get rid of the pain. And so you get home about two? Two, three, maybe, yeah. Okay, and so you just go into your room. Yeah. And, and you didn't say you went to sleep. You said you passed out. I passed out. I, I, w I went and took off all my clothes, and I passed out. And when I woke up, I saw him standing at my bed. She so dream she sex things. woke you up. But being physically raped didn't wake you up. No, no, the, the dream woke me up. He's <laughs> never, ever in his whole life have ever messed around on me, ever, ever. We've been married for 30 years. He's never done anything wrong, oh, ever. No. And he would never do anything to his daughters. Certainly not you. Megan says after that horrible night, she created an alter ego named London. But with this new identity came a lifestyle that Megan says she is ashamed of. And she blames her family for forcing her to live that life. We'll find out what that's all about after the break. After my dad raped me, I needed a way to support myself. I started to prostitute myself. I would put ads on Craigslist and meet about three or four guys a day. I started acting like a completely different person. I gave myself a new name, London, and she was a powerful woman. She was bossy. She was an extreme bitch. Nobody liked her. The whole time I was doing this, I was either on drugs or I was drinking. I didn't want to have sex with strangers. Like, that wasn't my ideal day. I just... I needed a way to escape, and that was my escape. But sadly, Megan says that wasn't the first time she felt like she had no other choice but to sell her soul and body for money and attention. As we talked about, shockingly, Megan says the first time she traded sex for money was at 12 years old. 
she places the blame squarely on what she claims was her parents' horrible parenting. What do you say to all of this? Um, just hearing this backstage, when I was just listening backstage, my heart just caved in all over again from when I first heard her make that allegation. I want to talk about what Megan has said about the night in question. As I, as I look at this, and you guys can just see it from right there, um, when I look at this, there are versions. You said in the dream, the sex felt good and it was consensual. Right. But you then also said that it actually was scary and a nightmare. You said it was consensual, but then you said it was scary and a nightmare. And in the dream, you said that it was sex we'll call type one, just kind of regular right. uh, sex. But when you talk to the show, in the original email, you said you awoke in terror after having a, a dream of someone having sex with you. Right. I woke in terror when I saw my father. That's when, that's when I was scared, when I saw my father. Well, that's not what you said. Okay, well, in the taped interview, that. you said that it was consensual. I do enjoy recalling it in my dream and then waking up. And in the taped interview, you said the sex in the dream was type two. I I'm trying to help you figure yeah, this no, out as well. I understand. Because you're saying scary and nightmare versus... Um, consensual and it was good you well, told yeah, me here today dream, that it in was the, in the dream it was consensual i wasn't i wasn't necessarily afraid in my dream having the dream but when i woke up to seeing my father there that's when i woke in terror that's when i was upset that's when i was scared and i was screaming well let's talk about that a little bit you told chrissy that you woke up to your father holding pants up as he made his way out of the room okay then you told us that you woke up to your father standing there pulling something up assume it was his underwear he was very close to my bed i remember i remember him leaning over picking up something from the ground and as he's walking away out of my room i i see him like gathering himself like that's the only other way i can describe it okay just well gathering let's himself. talk about that you told chrissy when you woke up Father said nothing as you screamed for him to leave. And when you woke up, Father was shushing me to be quiet as I screamed, asking what he was doing. In the taped interview, when you woke up, all your father said was, I'm looking for my cell phone. Yeah, that's, that's what he said. He said, I'm in here. I was, he, he told me when I woke up, I was like, what are you doing in my room? Get out. He's like, I'm looking for my phone. I'm looking for my phone. And I'm, and I'm just like, he's just screaming Well, did at you him. scream or not scream? I did scream. How loud did you scream? Pretty, Show me how loud you screamed. I said, get out, like, pretty loud. That's, That's not, not loud. screaming. That's not loud. Well, did, to me, I guess it was loud. Okay, so you didn't scream. Because I'm wondering, you didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. You said the next morning, Dad gave you an evil smile, and you put it all together. Okay, that's what you said to Chrissy. Then you said to us in the email... You made your way to the bathroom, you discovered the pain and the night flashed before your eyes and you remembered everything. Yeah. Okay? But then in the taped interview, we said we caught eye contact while closing the bathroom door. He had a crazy grin on his face like, ha, ah, gotcha. That's when I realized this had happened. The look that I saw on his face was just like Got a ha-ha, like, like just this evil, like big grin and dark eyes, like, Got you it just, what? it scared me, and I, I felt very uncomfortable, and that's when I closed the door, and I, like, sat there for, I sat in the bathroom for quite a while, like, trying to figure it all out, like, what happened, and like I told you, too, like, I replayed this night over and over and over again in my head, and I want to believe that it wasn't my father, but when I piece together all these things, it's very hard for me to, to lie to myself and say, no, this didn't happen. We're going to take a break. Megan's parents say playing the victim is nothing new for her. And they say that her holding on to this ugly story is just another example of Megan forcing herself to be the center of attention while playing the victim. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Did they kick their freeloading son out? How'd you get him to do this? Get him to make such a mess? I didn't. He did not come out of the womb and start throwing stuff around the delivery room. That's tomorrow.
tomorrow. You say that you were had had a head injury, okay. drugs and alcohol. Yes. Have you ever asked a doctor about this? No, I've never talked to a doctor. And or no, I never. Be because I want you to. Yeah. I'm bringing out a cell phone because one of our medical resources here is Doctor on Demand. It's it's an app you can put on your cell phone, you can touch it and be face to face with a board certified physician <coughs> in a matter of seconds. And this is my app, this is, I've developed this and we use it here with a lot of our guests. And I, I want everyone at home to fully understand the impact of pass out level intoxication and what it has on the brain and the potential danger that it puts you in. I, yeah. I want you to understand yeah, that. Please. So joining us now, is Dr. Ian Tong. Dr. Tong, good to see you again. Hi, Dr. Phil. How are you? Well, I am well. well. Uh, look, we're first off, can you define what happens to your brain at the pass out level of intoxication? Sure. When, uh, when you drink enough alcohol to reach severe levels of intoxication, uh, you can have a few things happen. One, you have impaired judgment your ability to really be able to decipher uh, between a conscious state and unconscious state also uh, begins to diminish, which means you may not realize that you're going in and out of consciousness. And this is something that um, people often refer to as blacking out. Many drugs can cause that, but when it happens with alcohol, you often go in and out in what's called the fragmented blacking out. Um, and when that happens, it would be very difficult to, um, to really decipher, um, I think, you know, between between uh, reality or um, between a dream state. Okay, and how about if you are mixing this with drugs in some way, in this case, cocaine? Yes, so um, mixing uh, drugs, uh, almost every study that has been done on alcohol intoxication and, and the use of other drugs really shows the, the, uh, the compound effect. So really you're increasing the potency of, of what the alcohol is going to do to your body and one of the major effects um, can be confusion and if, uh, if pushed far enough can even be coma. So, so the more alcohol and the more other drugs that are mixed with it can really confuse, um, confuse your, your brain and, and again your, your ability to, to decipher reality. All right, Megan has a question for you, Dr. Tong. Um, I have a question. Um, as far as like brain activity um, goes, like when you are in the passed out state and blackout stage, um, you're, you have, from what, I, from what I understand, you have very little to brain activity in that moment. So the fact that I was dreaming and I had this very vivid dream, could it be possible that in a way it, w I, it was reality, but I perceived it as a dream? Yes, I think if I caught all of that, the question was, um, can... Just Can something activity. that's re actually happening seem like a dream state? And, the, and, and that is the tricky part here is that the answer is yes, um, absolutely. It's difficult to, to decipher between the two. When you are a blackout drunk, do you, how, your level of brain activity, how, how would you describe that is what uh, I'm are saying. Are you saying do you, will you dream? Do, if, do you're, you, yeah, if you're blackout <laughs> drunk, do, yes, do you, you, you have still, dreams like that? Yes, you like, can still dream. Dr. Tong, we'll let you go um, because I've got some things to move on to, but I, I appreciate it. Thank you, and uh, everybody at Doctor on Demand. Uh, we're going to take a break. With no hard evidence to prove either of their stories, Robert and Megan both ask if they could take a polygraph. They both want the truth to be revealed. Those results after the break. Okay, Megan, let's go down this way to the examination room. I am taking this test to prove to my family that I am telling the truth that my father did rape me that night. I feel like I will pass this test 100%. I'm about to take the polygraph test, and I hope to show my daughter that whatever she thinks of me is not true. And I can't wait for the truth to come out and have this nightmare be over. I have here polygraph results. Uh, this has not been opened. I, I don't want to open it. I will if I have to, but I don't want to open it. We know 
that you have felt set apart from this family for most of your life. Yeah. We know that you have felt like your mother was unplugged <laughs> and a drunk, at times completely unengaged. You felt that your father was harsh in terms of get a job, don't bug me, certainly not someone you consider to be nurturant. Yeah. You felt like they had a different relationship with you than they did with, with others in the family. Yeah. I have seen people that have that perception, true or false, that say, you don't give me your attention, by God, I'll get your attention. Hear me out. I know. I, I'm not saying this is you. <laughs> I'm not saying this is you. I'm I just listening. want you to hear what I'm saying. I am. I'm listening. And then I hear you say, I, I go out. I bash my head to the point it knocks me down. I'm drinking to excess. You say beer, shots, everything, doing lines of cocaine in the bathroom to the point that you passed out, which means your cognitive functioning became highly impaired. You were unable to maintain consciousness. Isn't it possible that you're just wrong? I thought about it. I mean, it, it was definitely a thought in my head that I could be wrong and that, you know, I could have just been dreaming and I perceived the situation wrong, but the fact that I was naked and my covers were off my body and the fact that I woke up to him standing there. And Didn't you say it was still dark in the room? There was lighting from the outside, come, from the street lamp. Okay, now you can't change your story every I'm time changing, I ask I'm you a question. I'm not changing my story. This was it on It was street. either dark or it was light. It was dark outside and there was light from the street lamp coming in. You're drunk, you're high on I drugs, can't, I can't you're still passed it. out. I can't consider it because the way he was standing. <clears throat> Can you tell me that you are certain that he raped you? I don't even know. I can't, I can't, I want, I want to believe that yes, it happened because of my dreams and everything that I felt and stuff, but I did not wake up to the act of it. But yes, that's what I feel. Do you want to withdraw this allegation or do you want me to open this polygraph? I want you to open it. Something needs to happen. Like I don't, I don't know what it is, but this vision that I have is just horrible. I think she needs to know that my dad didn't do yeah, that. Yeah, I her. need to know that my dad did not do that. But, to me, but you that's understand. What I want to believe. I want to believe that he didn't do that. That's what my heart wants to feel, but I can't feel that way because I don't know what happened. All I know is what I felt and what I saw. That's it. Like everything else is a blur. This is Jack from Marco right here, Jack. Uh, you conducted both of these polygraph tests. I did, Doctor. Uh, were they good tests? They were both good tests. Uh, both took about two hours. Uh, both uh, Megan and Robert were, uh, I would say, on the high side of nervous, but we, uh, we worked through that. I do not want to open this envelope because I do not think it will advance the healing in this family, but they want it open. I'll open it after the break. We're back. There is a serious allegation from this daughter that this father raped her. They have taken a polygraph, and um, I was in hopes of not having to open this. When asked, did your father ever have sexual contact with you, you said? Yes. Did your father ever have sexual contact with you in your room, you said? Yes. The results are that that was deceptive. And that's fine. We then spoke to Robert on the test. The questions were, did you ever have sexual contact with Megan? Your answer was? No. When she was a teen, did you ever have sexual contact with Megan? No. The results of the test are that it was non-deceptive. Oh. Was this a close call? No, in order for Robert to have passed the test, he would have needed a plus two, and he ended up with a plus eight.
can you use this information to help yourself move on? I can try. I mean, I, that's the only reason why I wanted this was to know for sure, like, what happened that night, because I don't really know what happened. I just know what I felt. I know what I saw, and that's, that's where I got these feelings. That's where I got this idea in my head that, that I was him. If, if I get you some professional help to sort this out, are you willing to accept yeah, that help? Are yeah. you willing to do that work? Yes. You'll take some yes. help to work through this. Um, how do you feel about this at this point? Um, I'm relieved, but I'm also still sad that it, this all had to happen. And I'm still willing to forgive her. I, just, I love her. I love my family. Well, okay. And so now it begins. The, this show is not the end of this. It's the beginning for this family. Uh, I do want to thank all of my guests today. A very special thanks to Jack Tremarco. And a special thanks to Dr. Tong and our medical team at Doctor on Demand for assisting us uh, in helping you understand the impact. I'm proud to say that Doctor on Demand is my app and a company that I've put together. And if you at home want to have your own Doctor on Demand, you can go to Google Play's or App Store, download the app, push the button, and there you are. Thanks for being here. So long.